Hey guys, welcome back. In a previous video, we talked a little bit about generators and, and I told you I would show you a way to, to use your car to power some things in your house in a pinch. Uh, a lot of people can't afford a generator, I, I get that. And also, you know, some people say, well, I live in an apartment. I, I don't even have a garage or any place to store gas. So I got this little solution here. The whole idea behind it was to be inexpensive and as easy as possible. So this, you could get really complicated with this and step it up and do bigger and better things, but I'm just trying to present a, a solution here for you to, to get you thinking about it. So I went to Harbor Freight, because that's where you get cheap and expensive things, and found this inverter here for $35 using a 20% off coupon that anybody can get their hands on. 750 watts, 1500 watt surge it'll handle. It already, and the nice part is, it already comes with the cables and alligator clips. So if you buy one that doesn't come with that, you'll need a set of pretty heavy gauge cable and some alligator clips and put it all together yourself. But for 35 bucks, you really couldn't go wrong with this. You might find one cheaper online, maybe Amazon or whatever. I don't particularly care to buy things online too much. Uh, so <clears throat> we'll show you with this. Okay, here's the inverter. I was pretty much ready to use. All I had to do was unscrew this, these knobs here, put the cables on, screw them back down. You can't screw this up. Red to red, black to black. This is your negative, positive, okay? Um, here's where you plug things in. You got two plugins, little USB plug here for any kind of phones or laptops, whatever. If you you don't want to use that, that's what kind of plug you have. And then just an on off right here. So I don't know if you can hear that, it comes in a plastic housing. A lot of them are metal. So <clears throat> I'd really prefer to screw this down to like a two by six or, or something, some kind of piece of wood. So that one, when I put it on, a, on the car here, it's not shifting around, it'll sit nice and stable. And two, also that wood will act like an insulator in case you accidentally contact one of your battery terminals. Uh, that's that's not good. You don't want to short anything out. So basically, all you do. Well, here, let me reposition this and get up closer for you. All right. So this car is a six-cylinder Toyota. I have a bigger vehicle with a bigger battery. I could run this on, but the idea was to to pick something that uh, is probably more common and closely resembles what you have. So. <clears throat> positive and negative all you do is hook them up to the battery studs just like that that's why you need alligator clips okay and get a close-up positive terminal negative terminal do not hook them up backwards see where that plus that means positive you also have a plus on the battery here and a minus over here on the negative side so take your time and do that right I'm setting this on the box here because, like I said, I don't have that piece of wood. It's nice and stable here. It's not going to fall, slide around. But uh, an idea that I like also is if you don't have some of this cable, you got a pair of jumper cables. Just uh, hook one into the jumper cables to the battery. Bring this over. Maybe set it on a ladder or something or wherever on the ground so it just stays put. The vibration of the car won't knock it over. So this thing's ready to use. The only thing is you want to run the car. I'm not going to start the car for the sake of you don't need to hear a car run and me try and talk over it. While you're using it, have the car running, okay? That, that constantly charges the battery as you're using it, okay? So <clears throat> let me, uh, well, first of all, you're not going to run your refrigerator and freezer and all that stuff off of this. The idea is to give you some lights. And, you know, if you got a house full of kids and they're getting a little antsy after a day without power, charge up their gizmos and gadgets, phones, computers, laptops, video games, whatever. You could use this to run your television and DVD player for a few hours. Just leave the car running your driveway. Not going to hurt anything. One thing I will say, though, when you are done, you know, turn this off, unhook it, leave the car run 
for a good at least a half hour when you're done with it to recharge the battery. Otherwise, when you go to start the vehicle again, you may have taxed that battery too much and not left enough juice in it for it to start. So I'm just gonna show you here how easy this is to, to work. I have a little trouble light here. That's all it takes. You plug it in, run extension cord. Do not let your vehicle idle with your garage door closed and get all them fumes built up. You know, back the rear end of it outside or let it sit outside, whatever. Get a few hundred feet of extension cord, run it into your house. Be smart about it, okay? I leave this in my car. It never leaves the vehicle. So if I'm ever out somewhere and you need to use a power tool or Gosh, you never know you lose your phone charger and you got to use uh, you know that you lose the uh, The 12 volt charger and the only thing you have is you know the wall charger Charge your phone other people's phones whatever so for 35 bucks Can provide you a lot of usefulness and peace of mind so Yeah, if you like little tips like this uh, Smash that like button. Please consider subscribing it would really help me out, and uh, that's the best support you could give me for my channel, and we'll see you next time.